Dynamic templates are designed for products which require detail tables or where the amount of text varies significantly between items. The steps for designing a dynamic template are very similar to those for designing a grid template, except that you do not select a number of rows, only a number of columns. The fields grow and shrink option for a dynamic template is normally two or three, depending on your data is structured. If this is your first time designing a dynamic template, turn on a display unit border. This will make it a little easier to understand how the display unit changes size. Select a working category and either click the display unit button or double click anywhere on the example page. Notice that the design pad is tall and narrow. Also, the height of the design pad only represents half the page height. This is because it would be too narrow to work with if it showed the full page height. If you're designing a template with more than three columns, you might find it easier to decrease the number of columns while designing and then change it back for printing. An important thing to understand is that you do not fill the entire design pad the way you do when creating a grid template. Instead, your goal is to set the minimum height that you want the display unit to be and allow it to grow to accommodate the text. An easy way to do this is to place only a single field in the design pad and click the Print Preview button. If you've turned on the display unit border, you can see right away what the minimum size of the display unit will be. Once you've decided the minimum height, you can place other fields on the pad, keeping them above that lowest cell. In this example, the Fields Grow and Shrink option is set to All Fields. This means that any field can grow, and if it does, it will push all the fields below it down by an equal amount equal to its own expanded height. Multiple growing and shrinking fields can be used. In this example, multiple fields have been placed with a very short height and very close together. We've given each a different background color so you can see that, in some cases, only one of the fields prints. If the field contains no data, the Fields Grow and Shrink option allows the fields below to be moved up to fill the empty space. By keeping the size and spacing very small, the data can be kept very compact. These fields are too small to click so you need to select them by clicking their empty slot on the stack. Cells are allowed to overlap, and there is a specific order of placement as shown here. Data cells 1 through 20 print front to back in that order. The detail table and notes field print behind the data cells. Photo 1 is behind everything, and photo 2 is in front of everything. Overlapping fields will grow and shrink if that option is selected, but they will not be forced down by the higher overlapping field as they would if there were a space between them. The exceptions to this rule are data cells 19 and 20. These cells always print behind everything and they will not shrink even if they contain no text. This order was set to allow the creation of special border effects not possible any other way. In this example, cell 20 has a background color, cell 19 is above it with a white background, and photo 1 is on top, giving the effect of a photo with a wide colored border. If your dynamic template uses a detail table and you want to use rounded corners on the display note, there is one extra step you need to take. Detail tables have separate rules for growing and shrinking, and these conflict with the calculation for the height of the display unit border. To correct this, place a non printing field below the detail table on the design pad. This forces the border calculation to be made after the calculations for the detail table. Dynamic templates can be difficult to design, so if you have any problems, please let us know and we'll be happy to assist or even create the templates for you.